Right, five minutes to talk about our long journey on open source. Um, I'm going to go back to where it started for me in open source with Microsoft, which was back in 2013. Uh, at the time, I was an open source consultant. I was doing perfectly well for myself. Everything was fine. And then I made a decision that made people turn to me and say, are you crazy? And in all honesty, my response was typically, I don't know. And the reason is I went and joined Microsoft. Microsoft was a very different company at the time. Um, it was called Windows Azure for a start. And there I was as an open source person who went to Windows Azure. Now, obviously, I'd done my due diligence before I moved my family from the UK to here. I made sure that, as best as I could, I was making a good decision. And I think I was probably the only person in my ecosystem that thought I was making a good decision. But I did. I came over, and it wasn't easy. But there was plenty of people who were already on that journey, and there was plenty of people who knew the importance of Linux in the cloud. So fast forward one year, and the company is rebranded. It's no longer Windows Azure. It's Microsoft Azure. We were talking about cross-platform systems, and Satya stood in front of the famous Microsoft Loves Linux slide. So I started to feel a little more comfortable, and people started to understand maybe there was some reason I went. Now, only five minutes, so transfer, transfer, jump forward 20 to 2023, and we release Azure Linux. Now, today, that's not really a surprise, right? We're a cloud company. How could we not have a Linux that's optimized for our customers? We also have our partnerships deep in the ecosystem with all the other distributions. And today, it's kind of a no-brainer, although you'd be surprised how many people are still surprised that we're doing this. But it's not just about Linux. It's about the entire ecosystem. So throughout that 10 years, we've had many, many people. I've just been one of many who have been engaging with the open source ecosystem. So most people are aware, of course, that we, uh, we bought GitHub some time ago. And we are now helping to curate by far the largest co um, community of open source developers. The top rated open source IDE or, or develop editor is Visual Studio Code. For me personally, as somebody who's in product and wants to build stuff, 60,000 Microsoft employees are active on GitHub projects. That brings us into the top of the contributors for many, many very important open source products and ecosystems within the space that we, we, uh, we live in. And the reason we do this is really quite simple. First of all, customers want this stuff. You're all here. They expect us to be there and making the ecosystem stronger. And so we are there making the ecosystem stronger. If the ecosystem is stronger, then the customer is stronger and we're stronger. So yeah, it's self-interested. But who in this room isn't doing open source for some self-interested reason? But we also do lots of community building, which is for the benefit of the entire ecosystem. And what that enables is for us to be at the forefront of Linux-driven technologies. We're recognized as a leader in the, in the AI space, predominantly a Linux technology. We couldn't possibly be a leader without those decades of work in the Linux and open source ecosystem. So today, it's pretty clear that I wasn't crazy in 2013. I admit I was doubtful in 2013. I am absolutely not doubtful today. We are hiring. Please come and talk to us. But I want to go back to the, the ecosystem. We want to continue to strengthen the ecosystem. And so we looked at what's happening and you know, how can we help. And not surprisingly, we found that documentation and hands-on education is one of the biggest barriers to the adoption of open source, whether you're looking to adopt it as a developer or whether you're looking to adopt it as a user. We have a lot of documentation. So we took a look at it, and what we thought, what can we do that will help the ecosystem as a whole? Here's a typical example of one of our most popular Linux-focused pieces of documentation. And it looks just like all the other popular Linux-focused pieces of documentation in that it has bash commands in it. In this case, it's AZCLI, but it could be Terraform, it could be Ansible, it could be any of the tools that, that, that we use. So we said, well, this is just Markdown that we have here. Can we make it more useful? And this is a way of interacting with our documentation. On the left here, you have the documentation presented in a different format. And on the right is a terminal which is executing the commands that are embedded in that documentation. 
In this case, the end result is you've deployed a Linux VM on Azure and you're SSH'd into it, but we have, you can do anything you can do in Bash, much more complex environments than that. But the crit critical thing here is not just the user onboarding experience, it's also that because we're now executing those commands automatically, we can test the output of those commands. And that means that we can put our documentation in the CI CD flow for our software. We can test against user expectations in the software, making the software better, making the documentation better. Because we have better documentation as a result of this, we can train our AIs, and you can train your AIs, on improved quality documentation. Right? We all know that today, very often, documentation drifts from the software. Bring it aligned, get the AIs trained on the correct documentation, and you start to get a much more rich interaction between the learner and the, uh, uh, and the doer and the AI. It can be more direct in its responses. So the code for this, to do, make that executable step, is open source. It's MIT licensed. Uh, it's just a markdown file behind it. The application itself is a Go application, so you can run it anywhere that you can run Go, on your client, on, uh, uh, on your CI CD systems, wherever you want. So please go take a look at it, improve your documentation so that you can improve your onboarding and improve your, uh, your uh, ecosystem's experience. Thank you very much. <laughs>